Hi guys, hi everyone. I would like to share a new recording with you today. A uh, new recording for me, uh, because I discovered it quite recently, uh, about a few years ago. Mm. Recording of Tibor Varga. Tibor Varga, you probably heard of him. I don't know if you know uh, recordings of him. Uh, this time it will be a real video because you can actually see him playing. Uh, just to quote a few names, Tibor Varga, um, Hungarian musician who comes basically from the same area like Joseph Joachim, Joachim who was the closest friend of Brahms, uh, Leopold Auer who was one of the greatest and most famous teachers of all, a uh, Hungarian violinist who went to uh, St. Petersburg, uh, Leningrad to teach. What I would like to add to this um, unbelievable recording that you're going to listen to today is that one recognizes immediately the, let's say, old school manner of playing violin, the sound, silver sound, the vibrato, um, the, uh, I don't know, I would say the impression of the musicality, which is immediate and obviously the quality of the sound which you will hear it's not recorded today with our microphones and our technology of today but Monsieur Tibor Varga is playing Adagio by Mozart the Köchel 261 which was supposed to well not supposed to but was a idea of replacement of the second movement of the Mozart concerto number no. five in A major what I would like to pay attention on very much as it was striking for me is how much this violinist of so, so, so to say old school is actually playing by the rules of making music with Mozart as we know today as we heard of Mozart, as we are studying Mozart, as we heard in, in, in lessons about uh, stylistic, how to play Mozart stylistically, uh, how to phrase Mozart. Of course, he's still playing with an old school character, but his musicality, the way he reads the phrases, the way he reads the music, to me, it is so natural and this is so clear that it is only the actual shaping of uh, the music by Mozart, which counts, uh, which phrase goes where, how many phrases, one, two, and then the third one is the longest. Um, the way he does this is absolutely mind-blowing. So I hope you enjoy this um, listening with me and watching this time, and let's meet afterwards for a few little comments. Enjoy.
how beautiful, no? What a sound, what a, what a class of playing. Another one who had class of playing. As a little insight, apart from the musicality in Mozart, which I find absolutely um, natural and so true, so honest, which is also what happens to me when I listen to younger people playing to Mozart. Uh, very young students who are already able to play and who are playing to Mozart on such a way, so natural, so beautiful and free of all um, uh, pressure and all uh, problems and anti-waves of playing Mozart that we learn with uh, our experience, obviously. It stays natural and stays beautiful and I, I, I would not like to say that we should not study Mozart at all in order to be able to play him. We have to learn a lot about Mozart and study different way to make Mozart sound, but in the very end, when we come out and we deliver a piece of Mozart. We have to deliver this piece with our heart and with our most sincere inspiration and with our love. And we should never, ever, ever let anyone tell us if we are the Mozart type or not the Mozart type. We should not let someone tell us that, oh, uh, you don't like Mozart, so you should not play Mozart. Or, oh, you don't understand Mozart, so you should not play Mozart. You will only not understand Mozart if you play Mozart without feeling uh, the music of Mozart. If you just play uh, basically like every other kind of music, but if you play Mozart just to play the notes, yeah, then don't play Mozart. Um, but if you have something to say and if you love this music and if you have this music inside of you and within your heart and you want to deliver it to your people, to your friends, to your audience, to your teacher, and then they tell you that, no, 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 this is not how you should play Mozart. Well, learn what the people will have to tell you about how to play Mozart, because this is always interesting. But never, ever give up your love and your sincere and first impression of this composer and of his music. And now, to get a little bit more technical about this uh, incredible way of playing, I don't know if you noticed, but... It sounds so calm. I would even say contemplative. You can watch uh, a, an entire landscape under those tones, under those harmony, and just sit and enjoy. Although Tibor Varga is using systematically all his bow. From first note until the last note, he's playing with full bow. Of course, he has this, this hand technique which allows him not to go inside too much of the string and digging for the sign, but rather flying above the string. So even when he starts this, um, this one, first sound, um, um, full bow, and then uh, he just leaves this for the last uh, note. And this is exactly joining what um, the father of Mozart was writing in his book, Leopold Mozart, was uh, writing about the Gelinde Angeschlift, which I'm going to write in the description, which means to really kind of fade away the last notes of a legato. And then again, full bone. Even now, I don't manage to play with full bow without struggling a little bit and being scared of making an accent. This is the secret. This is many hours of practice. How to manage to play with full bow, with a fast full bow, without creating an accent, without creating any waves in the sound, kind of elevator effect when we're, oh, now there is something in the sound, and now there is something in the sound again. And to use full bow, just by caring, caring the bow from the beginning until the end. And I think in this video of a great master, old school master, Tibor Varga, uh, as technicians, as violinists, we should definitely learn about caring the bow, starting the note and then caring the bow until the end of the note without interfering with the vibration um, of the tone. And then this silver tone, vibrato, um, when it gets a little bit more dramatic, then he adds a little bit of dramatism as well. This, uh... 
he adds a little bit more because he wants to create the atmosphere of, of dramatism and some sadness, as the composer says, con tristeza. So add some vibrato if this is how you feel. Yes, do it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and I wish you all the best and see you in the next one. Thank you very much. Bye.